take that data that I've given you, put it into your calculator and see what you get for graphs. Here's what I get. For first order graph, graphing the natural log of the concentration of the CO2, whatever the reactant is, in this case CO2, versus time, I got a straight line and it's a negative slope. But you know that formula had a negative in front of the K, which is the slope of the line, isn't it? Okay, so therefore, uh, it is a first order reaction because we got a straight line. Now, by the way, when you graphed, and just to show you, uh, if you get a straight line, you stop there, you know what order you've got. And generally, you go in the order of first, second, and zero. But, just to show you, if you graph the second order, one over that concentration, you took that data versus time, you would have got a curved line going this way, and for the zero order, you would have got a curved line in the negative direction, because there's a negative in front of the K in that formula, which is the slope of the line. So, you see, you've got now figured out that the, con that the CO2 in the rate law obeys first order kinetics. So, how do you write the rate law? The rate law can be written this way, right? Rate equals K, concentration of the CO2, and since it's first order, then you put the one there or just leave it alone, now you've got yourself the rate law. Somebody says, what's the integrated rate law? Well, you know, Y equals MX plus B form of the integrated rate law obeyed first order, so that's what it was right there. And so you just write it out like that. Now, somebody's going to say, okay, well now that you've determined that, you've got to figure out what the value is for the rate constant K. All right. So if, now there's two ways to do it, by the way, two ways, there's an easy way and then there's one that's a little bit more involved. The easy way is this, if you were given an initial concentration of the CO2, so what you have to do is you have to go back to your chart and say, do I have a time zero and a concentration next to it? If you do, and in this case I gave you one, that initial concentration and natural log of the initial concentration goes in for B here in this form. So then pick a concentration of CO2 from that, any one of them, any other, other concentrations, natural log of that concentration, and the time that's associated with it. Then you can solve for negative K and then solve for K, and that's going to give you the rate constant. Okay, now, if, however, you weren't given an initial concentration of CO2, but the time started at, say, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, or 20, but not zero, then you just got to remember that, look at that value, K is actually the slope of the line. So you go back to your natural log versus time graph, then take the slope of that line, right, rise over run, change in Y minus the change uh, over, <laughs> the change in X from two points, and you'll be able to determine then the slope, which is the value for K. And uh, for first order, the unit is usually 1 over seconds. And then the unit for second order overall is going to be liters per mole seconds. And then for third order, it's liters squared over mole squared seconds, and so on and so forth. And then for just zero order, it's moles per liter seconds.